only 19 years old when she was put in a maximum security prison in Jackson, Mississippi, for attempting to desegregate long distance bus routes. Well, take a look at your screen here. This is a photo of Mulholland after police arrested her, along with a group of travelers after refusing to leave a bus terminal in Jackson. She had just traveled from New Orleans by train and before that from D.C. on a plane. In addition to that act of courage, Mulholland was involved in 50 of the sit-in protests, which attempted to integrate restaurants and other stores throughout the United States. In this picture, a very historic picture, you can see a man pouring a drink over Mulholland's head. You can also see her here participating in one of these demonstrations at 18 years old in 1960. Ms. Mulholland has lent her namesake to a foundation that is run by her son, which helps educate young people on racism. And she joins us now from her home in Virginia. And we are so honored, firstly, to have you join us on the show. Thank you. And I will say my son set up that foundation with my name on it without ever asking permission but isn't that just like a kid even right. when they're 50. Right look just like a kid when they look we always think that we know best for our parents doesn't it reverse on the other op opposite direction? Oh yeah. Okay so tell me this uh, you know I'm very interested in your involvement uh, with the civil rights movement especially during a time where you're in Virginia and and you face some backlash from your own family and from your own friends what made you decide that you wanted to be a part of the freedom rights? Well, I had already been involved in the sit-ins um, and arrested a couple times, mm -hmm. you know, went to the Supreme Court on that. And um, it was the students who were sitting in that kept the freedom rights going. And I got a call one night from one of the guys in our group who had gone on down. They were trapped in the church in Montgomery, Alabama. And just a quick phone call. Mm -hmm. and which is all they were allowed to make. And he just said, this is Paul, send more riders. So we got a few of us together, and including my buddy Stokely Carmichael, AKA Kwame Touré, and we took the plane down. But I think it basically had to do with, even as a 10 year old, I knew segregation was wrong. Mm -hmm. We were not treating people the way we wanted to be treated and all that stuff we learned in Sunday school and um, I wanted to make the South the best it could be for everybody. And, and I think you are definitely doing that. I mean, throughout the civil rights movement, we have seen plenty of activists share their stories and, and especially uh, your connection to New Orleans. Uh, you were supposed to go towards this area. Can you tell us more about the Woolworth sit-ins? We've talked about this uh, uh, very often uh, with some of the activists who are still here and sharing their stories. Um, can you tell us what that was like, being in the midst of that violence and knowing that you're putting your own life in danger? Um, well, that was in Jackson, Mississippi, that famous photo. Yes, ma'am. And um, we were three of us that were sitting there with the mob of high school kids. We were cracking jokes and telling the professor that wasn't fair, that you asked questions on the final that you hadn't really covered in class. We were making the best of it. And though we might well die, you're going to die sometime, and wouldn't you rather die for a cause you believe in than getting, you know, a hit and run case mm -hmm. at rush hour? Um, so just doing the the right thing and getting in, as my buddy John Lewis would say, getting into some good trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, back then, the young people, the students, led the movement. And I feel like we're seeing a resurgence almost of that movement, especially when we talk about the Black Lives Matter movement, where this is truly being yet led by the by younger people. Does that give you some hope or are you still, um, do you feel a, a little just kind of dismayed because this movement has to continue um, just so many years later? Well, I say my generation took care of legal segregation and now the young folks have to take care of the racism that was the behind it all. And I find it very encouraging, the size of the groups that turn out for a march for Black Lives Matter, and the fact that even the police are marching with them, kneeling to pray with them, singing with them, mm -hmm. holding hands with them. It, it is very encouraging to me, a, a lot of the things that are happening now. But 
it's a shame we still have to deal with it. Yes, I know that we have some things that have happened recently, um, um, more notably, of course, the Tyree Nichols case and also uh, what happened at the top supermarket in Buffalo, New York. It's, it's really sad, particularly I think the, the Memphis one is what bothers me mm -hmm. the most, that this would happen and the police were actually involved in, in it. Um, and I just, I wished we had moved beyond that. I thought we had, but we still got a long way to go. Well, you say we have a long way to go. Just coming from someone who's done this since she was younger and you are still involved, I don't know if I, I don't know how active you are right now, but what do you think we need to do moving forward in these next couple of years as this movement resurges and, and we are now, what, a year or two behind uh, the, the summer of uh, racial reckoning or the supposed summer of racial reckoning? Uh, what really needs to happen in order to see more progress in this movement? I wish I knew, but I don't hear specific goals mentioned as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think instead of just saying Black Lives Matter, we need to be a lot more specific on what we want to see happen. I know that, of course, you always used to have a, an actually laid out plan uh, throughout the civil rights movement and activists fought for specific goals there. Thank you so much for joining us, Joan. You've been uh, a tremendous honor to speak with, and I hope that we can see more progress moving forward. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you. You have a wonderful and day. And we shall overcome. We shall.